Hello everyone, this is another Physics 30 example. This one is uh, Unit 5, Atomic Theory, and this is Lesson 8. This is to do with Bohr's model of hydrogen. So here we have a question. Uh, we're talking about an electron that's orbiting a Bohr hydrogen atom, and somehow we know the radius. We need to determine the orbital speed. So let's just visualize what this might look like or how we might be able to think about it. Um, Bohr's atoms are the simplest possible things you can have. So you've got this proton in the middle, just the one. And then we're going to think of the electron, of course, doing its orbiting thing. Um, we'll find out later that that's not really what it does. But let's go ahead and assume that it is doing that. Um, and we're going to treat it just like a sort of planetary model. I guess, and what we're trying to find here is the the radius, this radius here. So we're going to treat it just like we would an orbiting system, okay? And if you think about an orbiting system, there's going to be there's going to we're going to think about an uh, a, an f net, and in an orbiting system, there's only one force. Okay, so the one force is whatever it is that's holding it in place. It could be the tension string or whatever it is that's spinning it around. In a, <clears throat> in a gravitational orbitary system, we would talk about this being gravity. But in this case, what's holding the proton and the electron together? What force do we, do we use in our analogy? Well, that's going to be the force electric. And... The F net is an acceleration. There is an acceleration, but it's a centripetal acceleration. So it's this MAC. And that means we have our statement, our formula that we're going to use here, which is V squared M over R. That's our circular motion formula that we've come across before in physics 20. And that's going to be equal to the force uh, electric in a non-uniform electric field, which is going to be K, Q1, which I'm going to say Q, the Q of the electron, Q of the proton, over R squared. Okay, we know the radius, and we know R. We are trying to find the speed. So, quite simple. We're going to go V, um, K, Q, E, Q, P, over r squared. The, we're going to multiply by r up here, and we're going to um, divide by the mass. The whole thing gets square rooted, and we should be left with, with the v. Worth noting here that the this r is going to cancel with the square. Also to note, of course, is that the charge of the electron is the elementary charge, that's 1 decimal 6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And guess what? Charge of the proton. Also the elementary charge, 1 decimal 6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Do we keep track of the positive and negative? No, we don't, because charge is a scalar value. Very important. So let's plug this into our calculator, see what we get. Should be 7.29 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Okay, so for our second example here, we have um, <clears throat> the total energy of an orbiting electron to be negative 7.15 EVs. And we're told that it then emits a photon. <clears throat> we need to now know the total energy after the emission. So we can think about Bohr's orbiting levels as just these straight lines. Um, we don't know anything about the name of these these orbitals, so I've just made some val made some made some uh, letters up here. So I'm just going to say that this this level is going to be Q. This is level R. Um, somewhere down here is going to be the proton, and these are just orbiting levels. What's what's cool about Bohr's idea, of course, is that <clears throat> these electrons can only exist at these levels. They cannot exist in between. It's a quantum idea. It's impossible for it to exist in the middle. So it's either here or it's here, uh, nowhere in between. What we know is some values, and we know that um, if if it's emitting 
energy, then it's going to lose energy, which means this electron has to be dropping down an energy level. So it's going to have less energy if it drops from the NQ level to the NR level. And as it has less energy, it, it loses that energy or it, it transfers that energy to a photon. Okay, that's the principle here. And we know the energy of the photon. Okay, we know this energy. Let's go ahead and just write this in. So the energy of the photon is going to be HC upon lambda. Since we know lambda, we know the energy. So we've got Planck's constant in electron volt seconds. Why do we want it in electron volt seconds? Well, because we're dealing with electron volts here. Times C divided by the wavelength. That's going to give us the energy of this photon. Let's put this in, 4.77. I'm going to keep all my uh, sig digs in here for now, and that's in electron volts. Next thing to do is to think about this as a, as a system. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do an energy statement. I'm going to say the energy initial is equal to the energy final. So what's the initial state of this? Well, the initial state of it is when it's at this point here. It's at this higher energy state. It's then going to drop down, which means it's going to end up in a new energy state, plus it's going to lose some energy in the form of a photon. So we're going to say that it's got this energy in the Q state initially. That's all it's got. And then when it drops down, it's going to have the energy in the R state plus the energy of the photon. All right, so now we just have to rearrange this and solve for the ER, because that's what we're trying to find out, the total energy after the emission. So the ER state is going to be the EQ state minus this energy from the photon. Okay, so ER is eq well eq is negative seven decimal one five ev minus the photon energy which is plus seven uh, plus four decimal seven seven evs and that gives us negative eleven decimal nine ev and that makes sense because in in when we're using these negative values the further we drop down the more of a negative value we should have because these negative EV values um, are with reference to the ionization energy being zero. So if the, if the highest possible energy state was this ionization level up here, this would be an energy of zero EVs. So the further down we come, the bigger the negative value should be so that's a bigger negative, bigger negative value than it was initially, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so for the last one, um, we are, we now have a bit more of a complicated Bohr's model going on here. Down here would be the ground state, N1. This is the lowest energy that the electron can have. And up here is the ionization state. At this point here, this implies that the atom has become ionized, which means the electron has, whew, it's gone left the atom. So what do we have? Well, we, we, we need to know what's going on if this unexcited atom is bombarded by a photon that has 8, 10, or 20 EVs. So let's think this through each for each one. Um, what's important here is that we think about this as a conservation of energy system. So now I'm going to say that we have this energy level 1, which is the ion, uh, which is the ground state. So the electron is in its lowest energy state. That means it's unexcited. It's got its lowest energy. It's sat there at its ground state. We're then going to add some energy to it. The photon coming in, whatever the photon's energy is, and we, we're going to talk about these three different energies, but whatever energy the photon has, here it is coming in, it's going to be added to the system. So in each case, I'm going to add a photon energy to my initial energy. It's the total energy initial. And then I'm going to think about the final energy. So the, what's probably going to happen, I'm going to guess that some of these will absorb, this photon will be completely absorbed by the electron. Okay, and then we're left with a combined energy, which, which is 
seen or experienced by the electron to be a certain energy level. So it's going to be an, an, an N value. We're going to try and figure out which one that's going to be. So let's plug some of our numbers in. should be pretty straightforward if we keep track of things. So let's go E1, okay, which, which we know the value of energy for. It's negative 17. So negative 17 plus this energy of the photon. Well, that's 8. Okay. So if we do that, we get 9. Okay, we're left with 9 EVs. So the combined energy of the photon and this ground state electron ends up being 9, which means, look at that, perfect. This is just the right amount of energy to get this electron up to the um, N2 values. Let's see if we can just do this. It's going to go boink up to there. That's where it's going to go. So in this, um, in, in A, with this 8 electron volt photon, we can say that the electron is transitioning to N2. It's got just enough energy to get up there. Let's look at question 2, or question B, sorry. So same deal, we're going to go through adding in these values. So we start off with negative uh, 17. We're now going to add 10. And that gets us, of course, to a negative 7. So you might look at this and say, oh, well, this has got more energy. So the electron potentially could jump up even more. Let's see. So it's got, it's got, it's, it's being pushed up to the negative 9, but it's got a couple more EV. So it's going to be sort of halfway between the negative 9 and the negative 5. But there's a problem. That cannot happen. The electron is not allowed to exist between the two levels. And I know that sounds really strange, but that's quantum mechanics. It can't exist between these two, two states. So rather than dropping back down just to the N2 and emitting a tiny electron, uh, sorry, a tiny amount of energy in the form of a photon, it actually doesn't even bother. It doesn't have, it's, it's sort of in no man's land. So it, it just doesn't make it anywhere and it stays at N1. And so that's probably what's going to happen in this case. Okay, now we do the same for C. Let's put these values in. So we're going to do the same thing. We've got negative 17. This time we have a plus 20. And that's going to give us a plus 3. So look out what's going on here. This electron is going all the way to 0 and it's going beyond. So in this case, this, this level here, this 0 uh, energy level, this ionization level here, this represents um, an ionization. In other words, the electron is gone. At this point here, there is not enough uh, energy or there's not a, a great enough electrical force to keep this electron being part of this atom. So it is going to be gone. So in this case, we would say this electron, it's bumped I, I should probably just instantaneously, right? Because the electron, <laughs> I'm showing it like it's in between these these levels. It can't be. Boop, it goes straight to there. Boop, 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 all the way up. And because it's got energy beyond the ionization energy, this electron is now out of here. It's gone. We can draw a little arrow on here, giving it some EK. It's, it's gone. It's ionized. The electron is ionized.